Director Brennan, nine minutes ago, the New York Times dropped a new piece of analysis and, and reporting on the state of Jack Smith's probes. And our conversations and coverage have turned to the evidence that he may or may not have developed around the most serious aspects of this case, things that you and I have talked about for almost a year now, and that's potential violations of the Espionage Act. Let me read you something that is that is new in this story. Um, it, it's about the complexities of having a grand jury impaneled in both Washington and Florida. And the Times reports this, the grand jury in Florida is separate from the one that has been sitting for months in Washington and has been the center of activity for prosecutors. As they investigate whether Trump mishandled classified documents after leaving office or obstructed efforts to retrieve them. Among those who have appeared before the Washington grand jury in the past few months or ha who have been subpoenaed by it, according to people familiar with the investigation, are more than 20 members of Trump's Secret Service security detail. That is the first time we've seen that figure of 20 members of Trump's um, Secret Service detail being subpoenaed by the Washington to, to answer questions for the Washington grand jury. What do you think on the classified document side an investigator is trying to ascertain? Well, I think the key question is whether or not Donald Trump showed those documents or gave those documents to anyone else. Clearly, we're very concerned about the unlawful retention and handling of those documents after he left the White House. But as you point out, the concern is whether or not this was actually shared, the substance, the contents of those very sensitive, highly classified documents was shared with others. And since the Secret Service members are responsible for protecting, providing 24-7 protection of former presidents, I presume that Jack Smith was asking them uh, whether or not they witnessed any of that type of activity that might have involved the sharing, the disclosure of these, uh, these documents, uh, the contents of them, to individuals who were not authorized to receive it. And so, therefore, uh, again, it seems as though this is just a mounting amount of evidence, both in terms of documentary as well as testimonial, that really just uh, points a, a very, very uh, strong finger at Donald Trump for uh, a, a series of potential violations, up to and including under the Espionage Act, which is a very, very serious violation. I mean, until very recently, there was much more public-facing evidence, including in disclosures from the Department of Justice, on the obstruction prong of the investigation into what was taken to Mar-a-Lago and what Trump, at least publicly, was saying, it's mine, it's mine. Um, and even in very, very friendly interviews with Sean Hannity and others, was suggesting he could take classified material in and out of boxes at will. Carol Lennick, who is very careful with his words, as, as are, with her words, as are you, j just alluded to um, a, a real sense of chatter around the practice of using classified documents or material as part of personal retribution efforts. There is one we know based on news accounts against General Mark, Chairman Mark Milley. Um, the account about him ruffling some papers and disclosing that things were classified so he couldn't share them seems to be, at least in terms of what we know publicly, a flashpoint in understanding both his state of mind about the protocols for classified documents, as well as his willingness to disseminate. How do you assess those sort of public dots? Well, I think by the reporting, it's very clear that there were individuals in the White House who I think watched in horror as Donald Trump was misusing his office for his own personal purposes. And so the Office of White House Counsel, as we know, based on some of the earlier testimony, were trying to restrain Donald Trump from doing things that he really was not authorized or should have done. And so, therefore, I think what we're seeing and what Carol is saying is that there were a number of individuals who took their roles responsibly. As we well know, his, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, did his utmost to try to keep things on the rails and were, was watched, watching things, uh, you know, come off the rails repeatedly. And so, therefore, I'm sure that Jack Smith is trying to get as much individual uh, testimony from individuals who were able to observe firsthand things that Donald Trump did, and because that's what you need in order to ensure that a grand jury, and maybe ultimately a jury, is going to have the amount of evidence necessary beyond a reasonable doubt 
to charge Donald Trump, if that's where they're going, with, m with these multiple counts. We talked about the unlawful uh, retention of documents, the obstruction of justice, the un unauthorized disclosure under the Espionage Act. So there are many different types of, of violations, I think, that Jack Smith is pursuing. And that's why it's important to have the, uh, the interviews with those people who surrounded Donald Trump, particularly in those uh, latter days in office as well as since then. There's some sort of calcified um, and I think kind of lazy political analysts that nothing can ever matter when it comes to the Trump story. I, I don't buy it. I think you don't know what's going to matter to a group of voters until that thing is before the group of voters and voters decide if it matters or not. C C Carol seemed to suggest that it's possible that part of the reason and, and what Bill Barr represents is sort of, I hate to call him the tip of a spear, let's just call him, you know, whatever the top tier of a cake is sitting out there on TV, anywhere and everywhere. Really, I think at least, I count at least four different networks that have had him at one or more times talking about how much trouble Trump is in criminally in the documents investigation. He's talking about Trump jerking around DOJ, um, talking about how egotistical he was when it came to his handling of classified materials. How damaging do you think the testimony of the people closest to Donald Trump now and over the last four years has been, the things we haven't seen yet? Well, I think certainly in a court of law, it can be quite damning because those are the individuals who actually observe firsthand what happened. But also, I think some of the public comments coming from a Bill Barr, who has, I think, long after he should have, maybe, you know, realizes that he needs to come clean on Donald Trump's true character. I think in the court of public opinion, while many of Trump's base will never, ever abandon him, I, I do think a growing amount of evidence and testimony and comments from individuals like Bill Barr, John Bolton, and others are going to lead some of those individuals who were still with Trump on his bandwagon to leave, um, sharing our war plans uh, reportedly uh, about Iran. It's an egregious, egregious violation of any type of, of norms and principles of ethics uh, of the Oval Office uh, incumbent. And so, therefore, I'm hoping that more and more of this, which will come out in court, is really going to reveal the depth, the actual depth of the reprehensible behavior that uh, Donald Trump uh, engaged in while he was in office and again since then.